part in a stock car race. He has been practicing earlier this week. It's very hairy stuff, I promise you. More of that later. But now, to see how it really should be done, ex-world champion Stuart Bamforth is going to show us. Stuart, it's go! Now, there's seven and a half litres of power going in there. Big tyres on the back. Watch the way the car slides out. And Stuart surges round. The car number 212. You're going to be seeing a lot of this car later on. And there's going to be terrific action and lots of sliding when he goes round the corners. Bags of power going down. Here is the ex-world champion. Now he's really getting it wound up. This is the flying lap. And into that lap goes Stuart Bamforth. The man who has been world champion in the past. And don't forget, it's not just one competitor like Stuart now. There's going to be half a dozen of them, including at least three world champions out against Paul Clark. That's it, Noel. More to come. <laughs> and you sit astride the gearbox, so if that lets go, one of your hobbies goes out the window. And one way and another, it's pretty difficult. The only easy thing about stock car racing is you don't have to worry about the navigation. Because once you're going, you just keep going left. I took him down to Bellevue Stadium in Manchester last Monday just to let him get the feel of the atmosphere there. You said that you're interested in motor cars. That's right, I sell them for a living. Yeah. You sell them? Yes. That's right. Now this is going to be a little bit different really. Do you do much driving yourself? I do obviously test drives, but um, nothing like this of course. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been to a stock car race? A couple of times. I've never actually taken part there, but I've uh, been a couple of times to watch them, yes. It's rather exciting stuff, isn't it? It is, yes. <laughs> and they do tend to bang into each other mm -hmm. and have accidents. So I've seen, yes. Roll over and <laughs> fall apart. And... Dusted my insurance policies off last night, so I think I'm <laughs> all right. <laughs> now, would you say that you're a fairly aggressive driver? Yes. You are? Very much so, yeah. So you're not going to be browbeaten by all the characters oh, yeah. you'll be racing? No, 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 no. Johnny, no. Frankie, who's an expert in these matters, who's going to tell you the correct way to drive one of these things. And we have complete safety facilities for you. Well, it's a crash uh, helmet. Thank you very much. So it's all down yeah. to your ability now. All right. To the Terrifying. Oh, yes. you're going very slowly. <laughs> I felt like I was going 100 <laughs> miles an hour around there. <laughs> the engine's delivering enough revs. Fantastic. How many revs is it delivering? <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's anything. It tells no, you realistic, it. nothing is well, all there. You're just going to have to keep going round and round and round right. until you can get a bit faster, I'm afraid. Thank you, Noel. <laughs> Well, it's a fearsome beast, and uh, I hope he doesn't have any problems with it. There's going to be a few more cars for him to contend with in just a little while. Hello again, Murray. Hello, Noel. Well, this is the Late Late Breakfast Show special, specially put together for Paul. Seven and a half litres of raw power. It says MG on the front, but it's like nothing I ever saw that British Leyland made. Well, let's tell you what's going to happen in the event. It is what's laughingly called a hare and hounds event. Paul is going to be the hare. The rest of them, which include three world champions, are going to be the hares. Paul is going to be given half a lap start. He's going to be given a bottle of champagne 
for every lap that he can stay on the track. Paul, how does it grab you? Fantastic. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't so bad until I saw the competition. I'm well, terrified. <laughs> Actually, Paul, we've been feeding those guys on raw steak all week. It looks like it. And uh, how do you feel about the chance of winning so much champagne? Are you a great drinker? Uh, I will be after this, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, splendid. Uh, thank you very much, Murray. We will come back to you for the commentary and to find out how he gets on in this special brand of hare and hounds. What he doesn't know is that I've told all the other drivers that they're onto two bottles of champagne each every time they give him a nerf. So, <laughs> and it's a bit of luck, the champagne will be flowing and Paul will really have some problems. We'll go back to Bellevue. It's, it's all, all about money, no. <laughs> After some of the incidents I've seen you having on Grand Prix, how can you say you've never been in a stock car race? <laughs> well, um, I haven't seen one, no, this is the first time. Can I just ask you very quickly one bit of news for motor racing fans. Do you know if you're driving for McLaren next year? Uh, at this stage, I don't know. I hope I will be, and I think they hope so too, but it's a question of each of us getting what we want, and at the minute, uh, well, we're getting closer. Uh, okay. I'm sure we will be happy about it. But if there's any problem, I'll sign you up to drive stock cars. I'll take you up on that. Okay, Murray, it's, it's all, all yours. It's all about money, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's all yours, Murray. Well, now, let the action begin here at Bellevue. There is Paul Clark. Away he goes. Half a lap start. Now, what about the rest of the competitors? The question is, how long is he going to last? How long do you think he's going to last, John? I would reckon about three laps, three, four laps. Well, they're pummeling ground, and the man who is chasing him hardest at the moment is the reigning world champion, Willie Harrison. Look for the gold top car, because the gold top car is the world championship car. And as Paul comes round, they're gaining on him fast. It's only one complete lap so far. It looks as though it's only going to be about three laps, if that, before they catch him. And it's Willie Harrison leading the charge. And behind Harrison, look for car number 199. That's Mike Close, the world champion of 1977. There, and it's Close going through. Close is taking Harrison. And Close is closing right up on Paul Clark. My goodness, you can see them coming out of the bed now. Powerful stuff. Seven and a half litres of real power in every car. And in the Late Late Breakfast Show special, I reckon Paul Clark's minutes are numbered, John. Well, he's not going to get no ease as much as we were taken coming into the corner. That, that's it. It's... And with him now, look, there is 199. It's Mike Close. And across the line they go. And up in the third position now. Up into third position has come Frankie Wayman. And there in line has turned down. There's going to be a bit of nudging. I can see Paul Clark going off. Think of the horsepower that's there. And he's passed. He's passed. Through into the lead goes Mike Close. And now Paul is surrounded by machinery. I reckon he's going to be up very quickly. I think there's a stagger on that wheel. John, what do you reckon his chances are for another lap? Uh, well, he's staying in there. He's hanging in. I tell you, I wouldn't want to be in his position. He's got five other enormous stock cars behind them, all shoving and pushing. I tell you, I'm much happier with commentating and I wouldn't be driving. Don't forget, he's never done this before, and he's been pushed oh, in every direction. Oh, he's going on. Oh, he's going on. Oh, he goes. And they're, they're ganging up on him now. One in front of him, one behind him, one alongside him. Now, through goes the second one. They're all getting past now. Past has got Roger Finnegan. Past has got Gary Ferrisford. And Paul is back down the field. He's up in front again. He's up in second position. But it's still Willie in front. And the crowd is roaring. Yeah. And off goes Mark. And there, there goes Paul. Well, he's driving a terrific race. He's keeping his head up magnificent. training ground because we're not going to be looking for how much different to what we've just seen tonight. Well, 
He's coming in now. The red flag is up. The race is over. Paul Clark and the trumpets are sounding at Bellevue. And that's a hero's welcome for him. Great stuff. Now, will he be able to back up? Will he be able to come and talk to us getting out of the car? Is he alive in there, Murray? Well, I <laughs> How does he get out, this is the question. It's all welded up solid. You can see it looks more like a truck than a racing car with that big engine. He's being unbelted, and uh, we're going to get down there. I think we'll be able to see a replay of some of it soon. I'd like to see the bit where the chap started doing stock car mating. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in there? Are they saying prayers? Or <laughs> and we want to see that he's in one piece before we go. We're running out of time rapidly. Oh, there he is. Can he walk unaided? He can. He can run. <laughs> well, Paul, that was absolutely brilliant stuff. Can you hear me all right? No. Can you hear me? Yes, just about Well, we have literally got to go at this moment. You lasted so well. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for giving it a whirl. Oh, thank you. Well thank done, you very Paul much. Clark. And that's thank it you. for this week. He's taken us, I think, for a whole case of champagne.